All right, we're gonna assemble this uh, 78 by 94 motor we've been working on. We've got everything cleaned up. We got the case clearance. Uh, we've got the cam bearings installed. I have uh, lifters in half the case with some assembly lube on the uh, lifters only. I use motor oil on all my bearing surfaces and just the assembly lube on the lifter and cam. Uh, if it's a new cam, I'll use uh, assembly lube or break-in lube that comes with the camshaft. We're using this cam over. This motor was uh, fairly new when it came in and uh, it had a decent camshaft in it. So we're going to go ahead and stay with that. All the lifters were intact, kept them all in order and put them back in the same place. We should be good to go. And um, yeah, we got new bearings here. We got a gasket kit. We got a new crankshaft, new rods, new piston cylinders and a new set of cylinder heads. Uh, we used the old case over, the old camshaft and lifters and the old oil pump. And when I say old, this motor was built back in the 80s, but never really ran. Uh, set around a lot, and it looked like it got a lot of cold starts on it from the uh, condition of the bearings. Uh, when you uh, don't drive them, and you just uh, fire them up in the garage from time to time, and uh, the motor oil is cold. This is usually what the bearings look like with a... Uh, short miles you can see copper starting to appear there on the center mains and uh, this motor was set up extra tight to begin with so we uh, eliminated the crankshaft that was in there it was a CB performance 69 stroke and uh, it was on the uh, outer limits of being brand new and super tight and uh, nobody made any adjustments as far as the bearing clearance and uh, that's why it had an oiling issue so Everything like that's corrected now. We're going to go ahead and start assembling this. We got it all laid out. First, we're going to uh, assemble the other side of the case. We have to put our lifters in there and our lifter clips. Got the cam bearings in over there. Got the main bearing in. We'll take that out so we can make sure that our crankshaft is seated properly when we uh, put our crank in. Now we have a cat that wants to be in the video. What is it, girl? So anyway. We're going to put that bearing there, and I like to use this bearing to make sure that the crank is registered in this half of the case. After we get our crank in there, we'll set the bearing on top here. And if you can move this bearing at all, you need to start over. Make sure your dowel pins haven't compromised your bearing or uh, anything like that. You want to make sure the crank lays in this half of the case nice and flat, and this bearing should lay on top of this bearing and not rock before you place it in the other half of the case. That should be your reference. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. Put a little Earl on the main bearing here in the center. A little bit. A little on the cam bearings. I already got the uh, lifters on this side. So next will be the uh, crankshaft. I'll go ahead and get that out of the stand. And we'll. Uh, Slide this puppy in. I get a lot of questions on this crank stand that I made. And all it is is a gland that welded to the bench. So I did use a forged gland nut. I would recommend you do the same because uh, that breaks and the crank's in there. That looks bad. Bad. Anyway, now we're going to. Drop the assembly down in here. And put the rear bearing on. A little foil on that puppy. Roll in the journal. It's easier to do that when the crank's laying in the case. I always mark the top of the bearing, opposite of the dowel pin. There's that mark. There's my dowel pin. And these are the two. Uh, case halves where it should sit flush so you always want your uh, dowel pin to be pointing towards the flywheel furthest back or forward the flywheel is actually the front of the motor oddly enough so we're going to pick this back up place our bearing on there Oh, 
the dogs are out. We have new hound dogs in the neighborhood. There's my mark there. And there's my mark there. I clicked in there. I want it to drop down. that one. And there's that one. So now I'm going to turn the crank to the flat sides. And I'm going to tap this very gently with a rubber mallet. Now I'm going to take my other bearing shell and I'm going to place it on top of the uh, crankshaft here and it should be flat, no noise when you try to move that. That tells us that our crank is sitting flat. All our dowel pins are lined up. And at this point if you put the bearing on top of the center main there and it rocks back and forth, you definitely have an alignment issue with one of your dowel pins. Alright, so now we can uh, Place our other bearing shell on our other half of the case. I'll go ahead and move the uh, camera over here and concentrate on this now for a minute. And we're going to assemble this half. I'm going to place the bearing in. Lifters are next. Lifters have all been notched. I think we went over that. I showed you the notch. Put that notch in there when you uh, go with an aftermarket camshaft to make sure the motor gets oil. And the lifter is out of range when it's no longer in the factory position. Alright. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, lifter clips in here to keep these in place. These are available at any parts store or online. And they're a good idea to have. They hold lifters while you put the case apps together. Keeps your lifters from falling out and getting you all aggravated. So we're going to put a little assembly lube on the face of these lifters now. We're going to put a little oil on the uh, bearings. Alright. We're going to go back to the uh, other half of the case now. And we're going to install our camshaft. It's pretty much finished, ready to drop together. Got our cam bearings in, got our lifters in. Got our assembly lube on here. We have our sump tube welded on. We have our bearing installed in the case. And now we're ready to move back to uh, the camshaft. So let's back the camera up. I'll get you down here. I'm gonna have to get you out of the way a little bit because I am blind and sometimes I have a hard time seeing the dots on the camp. somewhere over here when number one's totally at top dead center so it's a good starting point. Uh. 
Oh, I think I might have some glasses here. Because I'm not getting it on my own. You want to make sure that you get this right. Because uh, I've seen a couple of motors where they don't line these up. And it's not good. I think I'm going to need the uh, magnifying glasses plus some flashlight action. And this is why a little paint goes a long way. And when you're old and blind, you young guys don't have to worry about this. You can see stuff. Mark this with a pen. If I have a pen. I may not have a pen. Oh, I may not have a pen. I'm gonna put a little scratchy in it. A little scratch at least. Normally, like I said, I mark that before I put the motor in. My marks are 180 degrees from the keyway, which is a good reference point, but. Now for the cam. The dot is much easier on this. Okay, that's verified. That's good to go. Normally, if you uh, take a little bit of time and put two little white dots on there with some paint, that's what I normally do. For some reason, uh, it didn't get done. And you can see I had a little bit of difficulty seeing the dots. So I want to. Stuff like that is the stuff that's pretty easy to uh, 
save you a little time in the assembly process if you can remember to do it when you're laying all your stuff out and normally I do remember to do that I just uh, did not remember this time Oil there. Put a little uh, silicone on the uh, case half over here. This is another personal preference. Whatever you like to use to seal your case with, that is what you should use. I've had good luck with the uh, gray silicone. Use it sparingly. Don't don't make a mess with the stuff, and it works pretty well. I just paint it onto the uh, one half of the engine case, and it seems to work pretty well for me. So, you don't want leaks. I know people sometimes like the aviation Permatex, but uh, that stuff does get hard over time, and will start leaking. However, it is the old uh, staple, so it's hard to argue with it. A lot of guys like it. So, like I say, it's personal preference. That's all this is. I just turned the camera on and show you guys how I do it, you know. It's not uh, a video on how it has to be done, though. There are much better motor builders out there. I'm not sure they're making videos, but... You know, definitely not the uh, Volkswagen God. All right, I double sealed the back of the case. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'll just do both sides just because cam plug is a good time to put this in. I like to put the open side facing out. And uh, a lot of guys put this side facing out. But I was always taught when I was working on the line in Volkswagen. You always want to put this side facing out in case you get an automatic car or the motor finds its way in an automatic at one time. The converter bolts can sometimes clip the cam plug and uh, cause a leak. If you turn it this way, it has a hard time getting through the plug. So that's why I do it that way. I was taught that way. Uh, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. That was the reason I was given, so I just passed it on to you. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And then I'll put a little uh, silicone around this also. A little bit in each corner of the plug. A little dab. I'm going to check that cam because it jumped up a little bit there. I'm going to make sure that's still in the uh, proper location and then we're pretty much ready to put these halves together. You can't ever spend too much time looking at this stuff when you're assembling it because it's the last chance you have to uh, see it all together. So, Dots are still lined up. We're good there. We have our uh, See what on our case half, we have our bearing in there, we have our lifters installed, we have our clips holding our lifters in, we have oil on our cam bearings. We have the cam plug in, we have our rods torqued down. You want to make sure your mating surface is clean of all oil and assembly lube. So when the uh, case halves go together. What other see whatever sealer you use has a good surface to uh, seal on clean surface, oil free. Oil can compromise the sealer faster than anything. I've learned that the hard way. You get sloppy with the oil and get it out here and then go make your assembly. Sometimes you can have a leak. All right, I think we're ready to go. A lot of guys would uh, put the drive gear in at this time. I don't do it that way. A lot of you guys already know that. So if you choose to uh, install your drive gear, do it now. If not, I'll wait until later like I do. I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, sticky stuff on the sides of these rods so they'll stand up for me. 
Some guys use a uh, rubber band for this part. Not one rod wants to be difficult. Put a little pressure on them. Normally they'll stick in there. Okay. Rubber mallet. We'll tap, tap, tap. Pull those babies out. Guys, still in the frame. Still in the frame. Hopefully, this video is not cutting up in a million uh, sections. I do use a little aviation permatex here around the bolts, under the washer. Personal preference again. I like to use a sealer on the uh, oil pump also, on the oil pump gasket. Seems to work well. But it seems to fail me on the uh, case app, so I stopped using it there years ago. It's all in purple. Personal preference and how you were taught to do it is how this works out. Well, you know, if you're learning how to do this for the first time, you just have to find somebody that you're comfortable with. Or what's their technique and, uh, you know, add your technique to it and come up with your own technique. But it's just a starting point. Case washers usually have a flat side and a round side, always flat side down. personal preference too. I've seen people put the ceiling nuts upside down, plastic side down. That was a uh, common for one of the shops in this area when I was a kid working at the shop I worked at. That's how we could identify different motors from different people that built them. I'm using the ceiling nuts on the case. I like these. Came in with uh, the regular hardware. And normally, if I build a motor, it's going to have these nuts on it, whether you want to buy them or not. I figure out a way to pay for them. In the assembly, Uh, acting a little funny. A little funny. So we got a uh, 19 here. I'm going to crisscross them. Corner to corner. Let's go to 27 foot pounds. That's what I prefer. Uh, you can go to 30. A lot of guys do. If you're going to line bore the case, you want to go ahead and have whoever's line boring the case torque these nuts to whatever you're going to torque them at. So you don't have an issue. That there. We're gonna grab our pulley. Make sure this thing still rotates. Here on our gasket kit behind the bench. Fortunately, we won't need that in this video. Seven foot pounds. There we go. 
go. Start the center. Um, set this for 18 foot pounds. And I put a ceiling nut back here. I already put my uh, aviation permatex. And I'll use the ceiling nut back there on the cam journal. This old leak right here. And from on the right underneath it, I always put two ceiling nuts there. To, uh, cam journal studs. So you can put ceiling nuts here, or you can do whatever you want. I just a little trick that I learned. All right, that's some babies. We'll go ahead and put the rest of our uh, hardware around the case. Spring washers. I would use spring washers. Uh, don't use a steel flat washer. Get some spring washers, they can be hard to find. But uh, that's what it takes. I'll leave these out by the oil pump. The oil pump is the last thing I install in the short block. happy to get his uh, motor so we need to order a transmission because I didn't want to build it so we're just going to buy one from uh, Rancho Free freeway flyer this car is going to have uh, AC so we have to make all that stuff it's got a Gilmore kit and uh, I might make the bracket off the uh, fuel pump instead of the factory bracket that is mounted off the exhaust because when you have dual carbs sometimes it uh, gets in the way run these puppies down with the old speed wrench Go by triangle and pick up some uh, push rods, cut to length push rods, and uh, 
there was something else. I can't remember what it is right offhand. I'll remember that in a minute. Oh, some rocker arm studs. Some rocker arm studs. For these 049 heads that we're going to use. Run down with a speed wrench and then we'll come back and torque them with the torque. With the torque wrench. Snuck a 12 in on me. Does not belong there. Let's we'll get that out of there. This motor came in with Nick's hardware. It's going to go out with a proper size nuts on it. Sometimes it's the little things. I like ceiling nuts, but you know this guy didn't knock for the uh, hardware kit. Normally I'll use all brand new hardware. If I get to uh, engineer the whole build. Just because spending all this money on all the parts, you might as well buy good fasteners. Or fresh ones anyway. I don't like the uh, hardware that comes with the aluminum cases. I find it to be not very good. So. All right. That's pretty much it for the short block. We'll go ahead and uh, stop there. Got a few more uh, three bolts to put on. We can do that. And then we have to uh, <coughs> bolt sump on. So we'll do that next. That's pretty self explanatory. I don't think you guys want to watch that. We'll put the sump on. I'll get the bottom in all fastened up. And then we will come back after I get the oil pump in here and the short block completely built.